but you may want to learn to put that phone down when you're driving because it could soon get you in a whole lot of trouble. Yeah, forget the possibility of getting into a crash. Governor Susana Martinez has signed the statewide texting and driving ban into law. It officially kicks in in July, and if you're caught texting and driving, you get a $25 fine the first time, 50 bucks after that. The only exception with this is if you find yourself having to text and drive during some kind of medical or other type of emergency. Now, James Clark, young man, had been waiting for this ban to pass for quite some time. Last summer, his phone beeped. He was driving and then yeah, he did what a lot of us do. He takes his eyes off the road. In the amount of time that it took me to reach over there and, and look at it, I was in the shoulder, uh, overcorrected, and I, I flipped a, a couple of times actually. Mexico joins 41 other states across the country with similar bans on texting and driving. Another bill signed into law should relieve those who are deployed in the military from having to worry about fighting child custody battles, too. Governor Susana Martinez signed the Service Member Child Custody Act into a law with this special ceremony at Kirtland Air Force Base yesterday. Years in the making now, the law says child custody arrangements cannot be permanently modified when one parent is deployed. There's protections for their, for their finances and there's protections for their homes, but what was missing was protection for their children. And you get calls from service members who are deployed where it's just devastating to hear them say, I got served with custody papers, and, and they're fighting a war and trying to figure out what's going on with their kids. The bill passed the legislature in last month. Two eastern New Mexico counties have a new top state prosecutor, Andrea Reeb of Clovis, will be the district attorney for Curry and Roosevelt counties. Governor Susana Martinez made the announcement Friday. Reeb has more than 17 years of prosecuting experience. She's taking over for former district attorney Matthew Chandler. His last day was Saturday. He is opening a private practice. Chandler says he will still be the lead attorney, though, on the Roswell school shooting case. Voters in several cities and towns here in New Mexico will soon go to the polls to cast their ballots, in many cases, to elect their next mayor. In Santa Fe, voters will pick their mayor in a hotly contested race tomorrow. Former Democratic Party Chair Javier Gonzalez is facing off against City Councilor Patty Bushy and City Councilor Bill Demas. Voters will also decide on a number of charter amendments there, including one to make the mayor of Santa Fe a full-time job with a full-time salary. Then voters in Rio Rancho are narrowing down their pick for that city's top job. Former mayors Jim Owen and Michael Williams are fighting for the top spot, along with political newcomers Morgan Braden and Greg Hole. Voters will also decide among nine candidates running for three of Rio Rancho's six city council seats. Voters in Bernalillo and Corrales will also be deciding mayor and council races too. For more information on all of them, head to our website, krqe.com. Click on the links section. Look, you can expect the fight over whether the TV show Cops should come to Albuquerque to film to get a lot of attention today from city councilors. Councilors Don Harris and Ken Sanchez announced a new resolution last weekend. It calls on Bernalillo County Sheriff Dan Houston to change his mind and not let cops film with local deputies in April. The resolution argues the city's past experiences with the TV show had a negative impact on the image of Albuquerque. Councilors are scheduled to vote today on the resolution. Council President Ken Sanchez says he has invited the sheriff to give a meeting and to be part of the meeting and basically give his reasons why he wants the show to go on. No word on whether Houston plans to attend. He has said in the past that there's never been any data to prove that the show cops hurt the city's economic interests. Well, Albuquerque police want to warn you about a man who is approaching children with a video camera and a squirt gun. Yeah, police have put out a public service announcement about this, saying they're concerned about what this guy is up to. Nate Padilla says it's investigating reports of a man in the northeast part of town along Eubank, particularly going up to kids about 6 to 16 years old, asking to videotape them while he shoots them with a squirt gun. To me, that's not right. I don't think that's appropriate. So, and especially with somebody else's children, no. Sounds a little sketch. Investigators have talked with a number of people who say this happened to them, and officers, quote, have concerns regarding the man's motives in approaching and requesting to film these children. Investigators say the man is in his 20s or 30s with brown hair. He's often seen wearing a baseball cap. Police did not want to talk on camera about this, but are asking anyone with any information to call 242 cops. 
Well, the 15 year old boy accused of murdering his 12 year old friend in Valencia County last month will be charged as an adult. The district attorney announced on Friday he will try this young man, Brandon Villalobos, as an adult, and a first degree murder charge against him will go before a grand jury. Police say Villalobos led them to Alex Madrid's body hidden beneath a mattress in a field in Meadow Lake. But trying Villalobos as an adult means it could be years before the case is complete, and if convicted of first degree murder, Villalobos, just again 15 years old, could get up to 30 years in prison. Well, there is a shortage of medical marijuana in New Mexico, but state health officials have a plan to handle the problem. On Friday, the health department proposed two possible solutions. One would call for increasing the limit that producers can have from 150 plants and seedlings to 150 mature plants and up to 300 seedlings. The other proposal calls for opening the application process to add as many as 12 licensed nonprofit growers. The department is expected to hold a public hearing in the spring to propose those rule changes.